Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to sound professional using nothing but a USB microphone. I got this HyperX Solo Cast for around 45 American dollars on Amazon, but a lot of people say that this is very cheap, but I personally don't think so, at least. I mean, I know it's not as expensive as studio microphones, but for someone who's starting out on his content creating journey, this can be intimidating to buy. While I do accept that this is a wonderful investment, I was willing to buy one only after two years of working full time. For all these years, I have been using a microphone that comes attached to a HyperX gaming headset. And I applied a ton of filters to it in Premiere Pro when I was editing the videos and they sounded really good. They sounded good enough to get me a thousand subscribers. So even if you aren't able to afford a microphone like this right now, don't be deterred by that fact. Go ahead on your content creating journey and stick around to the end of this video to see how you can actually make your videos sound much better using only OBS and nothing else. So right now we're going to be switching over to OBS and by the way, this video is being recorded on my Galaxy S21 FE. So if you were wondering how the microphone sounds, there's that. And another thing which I have to disclose is that I am using a 16% D reverb in Premiere Pro because my room is empty and there is a lot of echo going on. So this is what it would sound like if all the filters were active and I have a 16% D reverb applied to the entire track in Premiere Pro. So for echo, please sound treat your room or use a D reverb like me, but don't go too hard because it will distort your audio. Uh, let's just go ahead and talk about how, uh, what kind of filters we got to apply. Let's turn off all the filters that I have. And we're going to come back to the order and what kind of filters I have a little bit later. But first, let's go to settings and let's open up the sound, which is already open. And let's go to the microphone level. This part is very crucial. Whether you're in Windows, Linux, or Mac OS, doesn't matter. This guide is universal, right? So you're going to have to see that without using any sort of filters or anything, your voice is actually touching the uh, yellow to red line. Now, uh, this has to be done without any filters. You you're going to have to be around negative 10 to negative six, seven around this area. Now my voice is actually a little bit lesser than this because I really don't want the background noises or anything else to come through. So I keep the gain a little bit lower, but you can increase this if you want to, but don't increase it too hard. Now this step, like I said, is the same for windows, Mac, Linux, or whatever you use. It doesn't really matter. So with that out of the way, we can open up the filters tab. So the first filter is a noise gate. Noise gate, what it does is if your microphone uh, picks up any noise below a particular threshold, it will close the microphone and not input any sound. So for example, here I have negative 38 decibels. So if anything, if the microphone audio levels drop below this value, nothing is gonna come through in the microphone. This is really useful if you have noise and you can modify this according to your room and the environment you're in. So if I shut up for a second, you're gonna be able to hear a lot of noise coming through. As you can see, it's hovering about uh, negative 50 decibels. So just to be safe, I have put a negative 38 dBs. Another thing is open threshold. So when the microphone gate closes, for it to open back on, it needs to reach the, the input volume needs to reach negative 34 dB. Then we have three parameters, attack time, hold time, and release time. Attack time is how fast you want the gate to open. For us, the default value is 25 milliseconds. Ideally, this should be as low as possible. For me, 25 milliseconds works, but you can try and playing, you can try to play around with this value. Hold time is for how long the gate will remain closed uh, and release time is what amount of time it will take for the gate to open back up once it crosses the open threshold. So for me, 300 milliseconds works. I was experiencing really jarring audio with uh, a very short amount of release time. So basically uh, it would sound, so like when I stop speaking, it would sound like there is total silence. And when I open speaking, there would be, and, I, and when I start speaking, there would be some background noise 
uh, mixed in with the audio. It was really jarring. So overall, I find 300 milliseconds for me to be a very good starting point. So you can uh, do that. So let's go ahead and, and enable noise gate just to get rid of uh, any background noise when I stop speaking. And by the way, if you are in a noisy environment, what you can do is add a noise suppression filter. Now noise suppression filter has to be at the very top because you don't wanna amplify or you don't wanna uh, process your audio with the noise and then suppress the noise. That is really not the way to do it. Add noise suppression at the top and let the rest follow through. I personally don't use noise suppression because I don't know for whatever reason, maybe it's because my laptop is very old and it's not able to handle it that well. It distorts my audio a little bit and I really don't want that. So what I, I just delete it. If you have a really noisy environment, uh, noise suppression works really, really well. But for me, I am able to control it down a little bit. Uh, I close my windows and doors and whatever, and I don't really need to use noise suppression. So the first thing you wanna have is noise suppression or noise gate. And the second option is the compressor. So inside compressor, you would wanna put the ratio as 3.5 is to one. So basically, whenever your voice reaches 15 dBs or more, the compressor would try to compress your voice or would try to de-amplify your voice so that the audio doesn't peak when it reaches a certain level. Because if you are at zero, your audio will peak and it will clip and it would sound terrible. Audio once recorded terrible cannot be recovered in post, so it's very important to capture it right from the get-go. So what I have done is a 3.5 is to one ratio is a very good starting point for vocal, uh, for voiceovers. Threshold is at negative 15 because I use for YouTube and YouTube recommends it to be around negative 12 dB. So I master from negative 12 to negative six. That's the range that I find uh, working the best for me. So I keep that. Attack, which I've already explained, is how fast the compressor will start to act. This is three milliseconds for me and this is a good value, two to three milliseconds, two to five milliseconds is a very good value for voiceovers. Release is at two, is at 200 milliseconds, that is okay. And if you think that the audio levels are going a bit down, like you can see the bar over here, it's hovering at around uh, negative 20 to negative 15, you can add a little bit of that gain to recover the lost amplitude. So, uh, and by the way, compressor, when it acts, it, it, it also uh, lowers down the amplitude a little bit, so you might want to have a gain. Now, this value of the gain is not hard-coded. You would want to play around with the noise level in your settings and the output gain value in your compressor to actually see what kind of value you would like. Once I turn it on, you can see my voice. My voice is reaching negative 10 to negative 5, and this is where you would want your voice to be. Next up is the three band equalizer. Now this is where your audio is gonna shine. So what, the, what these three frequencies are is high stands for high frequencies, so you're talking frequencies, and mids are for your mid, middle frequencies, uh, a little bit around the nasally areas of your voice, if you know what I mean. Uh, sorry about that, by the way. And low are the low frequencies. We do not want to disturb the low frequencies. We, we can only modify high and mid. So I have put a 2.8 dB of boost to the highs. So this is going to be a, this is going to be where the voice is sparkly and the voice sounds, uh, you sound alive basically. And in mid, you reduce the mid to about negative 2.8 so that it, uh, it reduces your nasaliness a little bit. So you might want to play around with these, but don't overdo it. You remember, less is more when it comes to fixing your audio. Let's turn that back on, and this is how my audio would sound if uh, I have these on. Maybe you can notice a difference. I definitely did when I recorded and tested my voice, so please let me know if you do notice a uh, difference. The next thing, the very important thing, is a limiter. So sometimes we tend to shout in, in, into our microphones when we are really excited, and sometimes we tend to speak very slowly. The speaking slowly part, compressor takes care of, but the limiter comes in really in clutch when you are excited about playing a game or something, and you just want to, you just not, you just don't want your audio to clip. 
So once you put the limiter on, you would see that I have a uh, value of negative four dB and it would never go beyond negative four dB. So in this, your audio would never clip. Now, sorry, by the way, if the audio sounded clipped uh, when the limiter was off, I will make sure to process the audio in Adobe Premiere so that it doesn't hurt your ears. Don't worry about that. And also the order in which you put these four is very important. So you start with the noise gate, which reduces the noise, then go with the compressor, which actually kind of levels out your voice, a, a soothing uh, nature where you don't sound too loud and you don't sound too quiet. And the next up is the three band equalizer where you give a little life to your voice. You make yourself sound a little, little less nasally. You give your uh, highs a little sparkle and it should sound really good. And then with limiter, you ensure that your viewers ears are protected. And so this is how I use my OBS. So thank you guys so much for watching. If this tutorial helped you, please let me know down in the comments and I wish you happy holidays and Merry Christmas.